Good morning, Bishop Cooper. You've been praying for Ms. a brand new ride. Cousin Carla, good morning. Miss Janice Teasdale, good morning. I saw the invite. Angela Griffin, good morning. Lindsey Jones, Sylvia Hamilton, good morning. Valerie Pugh, Ricky Jones, Linda Watkins, good morning, Miss Whitfall, good morning, and thank you for that encouragement, good morning. Daniel, good morning, good morning, good morning. Ooh, yes. Thank you. Thank you while you have a chance. Mr. Hawkins, where I'm Minister. I love y'all too. Thank y'all for taking me. All was well. Mr. Hawkins, where I'm Reach Ministry. Miss Kennedy, good morning. Gabby, good morning. Prophet Daniel, good morning. Yeah, Mama Georgia, I'm good. I was just late. Whoa, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know it's coming. It's coming. You got to know the Lord's going to be right there. Dr. Jerry Johnson, Miss Wilhelmina Wrights, good morning. Oh, no, I was good. I just got up late. Catherine Jones, good morning. Miss Charles Blacks, good morning. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Flint Brown, good morning, good morning. My apologies. Wait on the 
what it is. Okay. Thank you, Lord. What a friend we have. We have in Jesus. Good morning, Miss Peter Mason. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I apologize for my late. It's a morning out of Aiken, South Carolina. We're going to go right back into the Word of God this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Miss Gladys Cannon. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, no, Mama Georgia. I'm good. I thank you, though. Love you, though. Love you. Reverend John Gibson. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Annie Stubbs. Good morning. Surprise. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Miss Marie, good morning. Miss Barbara West, good morning. Good morning, Ms. LeVon Gauda, Ms. Christina West. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Again, I apologize for my lateness, uh, but we just thank God for all that he has done. All is well. I I got up late and, and uh, messing around last night. Uh, with the radio station, I want to thank uh Charlie Dewop, uh, because she the one that I call sometimes when I need somebody to to uh check out and verify uh is the is it the sound right and all of that. 
So, you know, all is well, all is well. And I appreciate all of your concerns, all of you that inbox me, especially the encouragement uh, that I got this morning. I appreciate that, uh, um, uh, Sister Wickfall. I really do. I really do. And we just thank God for all things because God is just an awesome God and he is indeed worthy of the praise. I always often say it's not about Billy, but it's about being obedient and submitting to uh, what God has called you to do. Yeah, yeah. You, if you do that, then everybody can be blessed. When you be obedient, when you be submissive to the will of God, everybody can benefit from it and be blessed. Good morning, Ms. Isabella. Ms. Isabella called me. Um, Ms. Isabella. <laughs> Ms. Isabella is something else, boy. She, she had not drunk too much coffee yesterday, though. But she all right with me. She all right with me. All right. Good morning, Ms. Evelyn Davis. Good morning. Good morning. Listen, we're going to continue our study on a de- deceptive presentation. And... Um, I don't know about you, but even in, in me, you know, teaching and reading it and studying it, uh, it's opening my eyes to some things that I uh, wasn't aware of. Um, but I believe that we're in a time to where the body of Christ is. I'm on TikTok. Don't tell me that. <laughs> don't tell me that. All right, Miss Thelma, we're praying for you and your family. Sorry for your loss. Uh, we're praying for your family. Praying for all the bereaved families uh, that God will strengthen and undergird you and uh, and keep you is our prayer. And as I was saying, you know, uh, the series uh, that God put in my uh, spirit to teach uh, because of the times that we're living in and we have so many uh, voices, so many uh, people with their own uh, doctrine, routine, uh, theory, and all of that. Uh, but, you know, it's time for us as the people of God and the representatives of God to begin to stand uh, according to the word of God, not our personal feelings, not our emotions, uh, not uh, what we think, what our opinion is, but what the word of God is saying. Um, and as we uh, have been dealing with Second Peter, uh, the second chapter, um, and we've been looking at what he has said, I thought it was important that we understand where he was coming from, um, why he was talking the way he was talking, and his concern. And we brought out three points on uh, yesterday that, that 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 Peter was concerned about. Uh, okay, uh, Miss Laverne, we're gonna we're gonna be praying for your aunt. And I brought out three points that he was concerned about. And then when I began to research uh, about it, uh, he was uh, coming from almost like a pastoral position. Um. Uh, a shepherd, a leader is concerned about their sheep. They're concerned about the spiritual uh, part. They're they're concerned about feeding. They're concerned about protecting. Uh, they they are concerned. You cannot be in ministry and do not have compassion for people. You cannot be in ministry and don't have compassion, love for people. And so uh, I'm just going to dive right into this on this morning since I'm, I'm, I'm running late um, and go back into this. Now, as we have been teaching, well, let's do this. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for allowing us to assemble ourselves together. And, and Father, I pray, God, that as we go forth in this word, that you allow Billy to decrease and you increase. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And Father, I pray for the sick. I pray for those that are going through bereavement. I pray, God, that you begin to heal and begin to strengthen and begin to comfort. In the mighty name of Jesus that we pray, amen and amen. All right, so we're going back to Second Peter, the second chapter, and the title of this series is 
a deceptive presentation. A deceptive presentation. Um, and as we've been looking at what Simon Peter, and, and I, I, I want to go back and reiterate this because I think it's important that we understand that when we look at men and women of God, that God has chosen, uh, that God has trusted them uh, with uh, revelation and with and with the secrets that some things that he don't reveal uh, to everybody. And as we look at Simon Peter and we look at him, we're looking at him in the aspect of look at how when Jesus asked him a personal question, who do you say I am? And when Peter replies and says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, what is happening is Jesus responds by saying that flesh and blood, this is what I want us to focus on, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. When you're talking about revelation, revelation comes from God. All right. Revelation comes from God. So when Peter uttered these, uttered these words, and he begins to speak these words, Jesus in turn replies to him and says, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. Well, as we look at Peter and we're looking at his, uh, his teaching, what is he concerned about? Because it was dealing with the early church. It was dealing with uh, the, the, the false teaching and the influence of the false teaching you see so he is addressing it because he's he wants them to be aware he wants them to be aware he wants them to to understand what to look out for so what does he do he begins to talk about the lying prophets he begins to talk about the false teachers he established that it was that it that it took place uh, in the Old Testament back then in the biblical days, and he acknowledges that it is still happening, that it is still happening. Good morning, Ms. Margaret Hamilton. Good morning, Ms. Brenda Minnick. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Keita, good morning. Ellen Keita Miles, good morning. So he is establishing the fact that, that, that the same thing that has been going on in the past is going on currently, presently, right now. Even the Bible even lets us know that in the last days there will be seducing spirits, that people would rather believe fables than the truth. You see? And some people have turned the truth into, uh, or calling people who are proclaiming the truth, they are calling them the same thing they call Jesus, Beelzebub, the devil. You got a spirit about you. You see. So the 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 thing that we're we're looking at is we're looking at what is it that describes or what is it uh, that points to let us know what a false teacher is. All right. In this sense, Peter is saying that the false teacher is the person. Uh, good morning, Sherry. Praying for you. Praying for you. He's saying that when you look at a false teacher, he begins to talk about, and this was interesting to me, because he begins to talk about, as I read the amplified version of the scripture, that it's a person basically that sometimes have experienced, has experienced, uh, has uh, understand, like we see in the day, we have a lot of people who have been preaching the gospel and have experienced the gospel, uh, have, have experienced uh, uh, demons uh, being cast out, has it, have experienced healing and miracles and signs and wonders. But now it seems as though the, that some people are conforming to an alternative gospel. 
uh, trying to say that, hey, that 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 what I was taught, what I uh, was uh, reading, it's not what it, 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 it seems to be. And so what it does is it moves us from the gospel or it moves us from the word. Then it moves us to theory. Now we start operating and we start believing what man says. Now, the only difference here with Simon Peter is Peter is operating on revelation. All right. Paul even said it. Paul said that the gospel that I preach was not taught to me by man. It was revealed to me. There is a difference. There is a difference when you are, are speaking uh, revelation, when you uh, when it's been revealed to you. You know, when it's been revealed to you, remember what we said about Cleopas, Cleopas and the disciple when they were sitting there and they were breaking bread. And it was the day that Jesus had risen and Jesus reveals himself. To. These disciples. That's an experience. That's a revelation. That's something that people, no matter how much they debated, no matter how much they may not believe it. I remember we was talking about this yesterday. My responsibility is to be obedient and to give what God has given me to give, what God has commissioned me to give. Now, whether you believe it or not, that's on you. Whether you receive it or not, that's on you. But my job is to obey. My job is to submit to his will. My job is to carry out and execute what it is that he has given me to do. That's what my job is. I used this analogy yesterday. I am a representative of him. You are a representative of him. All of us represent him. So that means that if I'm representing some, somebody, that means that if, even if I'm going, even if I'm, I'm the one that execute what it is that I've been asked to execute, the, the reality of it is that I am a representative of the individual. So I'm going on behalf of the individual. That's what I'm doing. I'm going on behalf of the individual. So I'm a representative of him. That's why, that's why I understand that I can't take his glory. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the executor. He's the one that has given me the instructions. He's the one that has, has given me uh, the, the, the command to go and do this and do that. Now, if I do this and I do it the way that he tells me to do, the result is there's going to be manifestation. Why? Because he's going to confirm. He's going to confirm that I am speaking the words that he has given me or I am performing or I'm executing what he's told me to do. So the end result is going to be manifestation. All right. Good morning, uh, lovely at night, night. Good morning, Ataqua. Good morning. You see, that's that's what that's what obedience leads to. It leads to manifestation. That that he begins to confirm that yes, I gave this to them. Yes, I told them to say this. Yes, I told them to do this. Yes, I told them to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yes, I told. So it's out of obedience. You know, see, when, when you're called and you're ordained and you're chosen, it does not become about you. It don't become about you. This is one of the, 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 the things that, Paul, that Peter says here in Second Peter about a false teacher. A false teacher. It's all about them. It's all about them. Now that that ain't deep. That ain't that ain't something uh, profound. But I promise you, it's necessary 
because it, it, it becomes all about them. Look what, look what he says, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version um, of, 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 of the Bible here. And, and what they do, he begins to describe them. He begins to say, I'm going back to the first verse, they smuggle in destructive divisions. Now, one thing that we described on yesterday was we talked about um, we talked about the characteristics of the serpent in Genesis. All we talked about the characteristics of Satan, period, cunning. All right. Manipulative. All right. He is a he's sly. He knows how to 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 charm. He knows how to to appeal. He knows how to 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 bring a presentation of uh, uh, of seduction. This is this is the characteristic characteristics of him. This is what he does. So even though Eve knows what God said and the consequence, if she did it, the serpent begins to give his presentation, which starts with the elimination of the consequence. What did he do? What does he do? He tells her, you're not going to surely die. See, if you look at the, 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 the method, it's, it's almost like it is still happening today. Because this is what people are trying to tell people today. There is no such thing as eternal torment. There's no such thing as, as, as hell. If I eliminate the consequence, because remember, Peter describes a false prophet, a false teacher, as a person who is on a downward path to destruction. But before they go down that path, they begin to try to influence people. Who are they influencing? They're influencing mixed up people, gullible people. You see, this is why discernment is necessary. That you don't easily believe something because it sounds good oh that sounds godly but did god authorize it you see did he did did he sign off on this is this really god speaking or is this a a a manipulative way of trying to, good morning, uh, Eric Bates, good morning. Um, is this an, uh, a, a way to manipulate? See, I, in order for me to get you to, uh, order for Satan, I'm going to say, to get you to, to buy into something, first of all, he's not coming with the, the, the obvious. He's going to have to uh, uh, dress it or package it with something that's going to entice you to pull you in. All right. This is how this is how cults get started. This is what I talked about Jim Jones the other day. Jim Jones started off Pentecostal. Uses uses the Pentecostal the the sound. You see? The sound, the 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 the, the music, the, the 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 things he's using, all of this. This is uh, playing to his uh uh a uh, 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 plan. Now that people are captivated by what they see or what they're part of, then now instead of him referencing God, he begins to reference himself. Mm -hmm. And now that he referenced himself and they began to hang on every word that he says. Now it's no longer about God. It's about what Jim Jones says. 
And then when you go into business for yourself, then it's almost like this. Don't believe no, nobody else's voice but my voice. Have you ever heard that? Don't believe, don't believe nobody else's voice but my voice. My voice is the only voice that's right. Everybody, everybody else is a stranger. Even some of those people that were following him had left and separated from their families. Because his voice to them was the only voice that was right. All right. Good morning, Joy. So what you have to be careful of is that you don't become a victim of this and you and you won't become a victim of this if your discernment kick in if you if you have that discernment now look what he says they smuggle in destructive divisions pitting you against each other pitting you against each other biting the hand of the one who gave them a chance to have their lives back they put themselves on a fast downhill slide to destruction. These are the words I want you to pay attention to because what the Amplified Version is saying, and it's really making it clear uh, of, the, of the King James Version, what it is saying is they are choosing this path. You know, a lot of times we were talking about like, well, God, but they are choosing. They chose this path. They are choosing this path. That's why I, the, the, the power of choice. They are choosing this path. Two, but not before they recruit, recruit a crowd of mixed up followers who can't tell right from wrong. This is the amplified version of, of the second chapter of, of Peter, of second Peter. All right. They are only out for themselves. They'll say anything, anything that sounds good to exploit you. They won't, of course, get by with it. They come to a bad end, for God has, look what Peter says. Look what he says. For God has, not man, this ain't got nothing to do with us. This is, this is what God, said. look what he said. For God has never stood by and let that kind of thing go on. Now, he's not just talking about in the, in the old. He's talking about even now. God has never. I'm talking about the God, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That God has never let that gone by. These false teachers, these false prophets, God has never let that thing go by. This is what Peter says. Then he begins in the fourth verse to give examples to let us know to give us proof, to give us evidence that God didn't let it go by. All right. He's given us proof. Look what he talks about. First thing he talks about is this. In the fourth verse, he said, God didn't, did not let the rebel angels off the hook, but jail them in hell till judgment day. He didn't even let the angelic beings off the hook. Watch this. Because you remember, Satan wanted to be God. Satan wanted to be God. And Satan's message had to be convincing because he convinced a third of the angels to follow him. You see? Good morning, Willie and Diane Frazier. So what, what is Peter saying? What is, what is the writer saying to us? He's saying 
let's go back. He, he gives us the description of false teachers, false prophets. He lays the foundation to let us know. He lets us know that if the false teachers and the false prophets, he lets us know that this is not just going on in the past, but it's also going on currently. And I read the description of why Peter is addressing this because he's doing it from almost a pastoral position. He's an apostle. But he's talking about this because he's concerned about the influence of the false teachers. Jude said, Jude said this, there was going to come a time to where, and I know I'm repeating myself from yesterday, that we have to contend for the faith. Contend, defend the faith, stand on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Absolutely, Eric. If he didn't let them off the hook, then what makes you think he's going to let us off the hook if we are falsely teaching? There is no Christ. There was no crucifixion. There was no resurrection. Do you not know that after the resurrection took place and those people that were guarding Jesus, the Bible said that they went back and they told uh, the council what took place and that Jesus had risen like he said he would. And the Bible said that those people that were in uh, uh, control, in power, told them, paid them, to spin a false narrative. And what was that false narrative? That somebody had came and stole Jesus' body. And some people believe that to this day. But when you look at the scripture, they were paid to go out and spread that false narrative, denying the fact where well, they couldn't deny because they saw it, they experienced it. When they went back and told those powers to be what took place, then the powers to be went and they used money. I'm going somewhere with this. Use money to denounce what took place, to spin a narrative, to suggest that somebody stole his body instead of relaying the truth that he had risen just like he said he would. You see? Just like he said he would. And the same method is happening today. This is why you see in such exposure at certain levels because people that that, that carried the gospel, that, that were carrying the gospel, that God trusted, were seduced and pulled in by, by filthy lucre and, and, and fame and, 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 and power and, and pride and position until they began to feel as though that because I have all of this and I, I've gained all of this and I have this access and I I have connections with, with people in power. I, 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 I'm, some people felt like that they were invincible, that they would never, ever be caught up with. But now read what Peter said. Peter said that God has not allowed this kind of thing to go on and not deal with it. If he didn't let the angelic beings you see if he did not allow them to get away with it, then he goes a little further. Neither did he let the ancient ungodly world off. He wiped it out with the flood, rescuing only eight people. Noah, the sole voice of righteousness, was one of them. 
Remember the Noah that was preaching, teaching. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. And the Bible said that the people were not only not believing him, but they continued in their behavior. See, my brothers and sisters, it, it does not matter how many people that don't believe the message that, that you are, you, you, you're, you're teaching or you're preaching that God has given you. What, what, what's important is that you continue to be obedient and submissive. It's on them whether they receive or they reject. You see? So Peter not only establishes about the false teachers and the false prophets, but he also established, he also established who they target. If you're reading this, this is who they target. They target mixed up people. But then he begins to say that God has not allowed this to go on without taking care of this. You see? You may say, well, 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 Bishop, why is this necessary? Because this is happening. It's happening in real time. Do you know how many people's characters have been killed? How many people, well, not killed, but how many people's characters have been assassinated? How many characters have, have people are looking at people in a, in a, 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 a bad way because people have gone to the extreme to make sure that somebody's name is not credible, that somebody's word is not credible. Do you understand that the Bible said that jealousy is as cruel as the grave? Do you know what limps people go to in order to try and tear the character of an individual down all because they, it ain't that they've done anything to them, but they don't like what they are saying, what they're standing for. Jesus went through all of this. He went through character assassination. He went through those attempts to where they tried to pull him into stuff, where they tried to use what he said against him. Do you know when they went to, 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 when they came against Stephen in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, do you not know that not only was those people conversed to make up that lie on Stephen, they were paid to make up that lie. They were told, they were told to do this in order for Stephen to be stoned. And you want to know why? It was because of what Stephen stood for. It was because they could not manipulate him. It was because he was full of the Holy Ghost. They influenced other people to go along with the narrative. I'm going to use Brother Eric's question this morning. How many people have gone along with a narrative about you? How many people have been paid? And you may say paid, yeah. Sometimes paying is, I'm going to do this, and I'll take you out, and I'll take you out to eat, and I'll, I'll, I'll do this for you, and I'll do that. only thing I want you to do is I want you that when I say something or when I do something, just be in agreement. And some of us don't even know that we're playing a part into something because we are being, we're attractive to things. We're attracted to money. We're attracted to give people giving us stuff and don't understand that the motive behind the gifts and the money is control. You see? Control. If I, 
if I keep giving you something, if I keep doing something for you, if I, if I keep handing this to you, and sometimes people become gullible and don't see because you're operating in a, in a place of, of, of the only thing you're seeing is what you are receiving. You're not seeing the intent behind the gift. You're not seeing the motive behind because now you just see what you're getting. You're just seeing that. But when you have discernment, you see, <laughs> sometimes you can take the gift and tell them, I, 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 I thank you, but I ain't finna participate in nothing. I ain't finna down somebody that I don't know. I'm not just going to go by what somebody tells me about somebody that I don't know that I ain't had the opportunity to get to know. What they did was they, they, they conversed people to, to, to spin the narrative about Stephen because they wanted him to be stoned. And what was the reason? Because he stood for the gospel. I sure will. I sure will be praying for your family. He stood for the gospel. He was full of the Holy Ghost. They could not manipulate him. And my brothers and sisters, as we move forward and we begin to go uh, forward in God, we have to understand opposition is going to come. Adversity is going to come. That's why when Jesus commissioned or, or when Jesus gave that power and authority to the disciples. He just didn't only give them power and authority. He gave them instructions. He prepared them for what they were getting ready to walk into. He told them, I'm getting ready to send you among wolves. I'm getting ready to send you uh, sheep among wolves. I'm getting ready to send you. you going into a dangerous territory. Good morning, Ron Porter. You're going into a dangerous place. You're going into a place. You're going into a hostile environment. You're going through, you're going to sometime a rebellious environment. But then he also began to prepare them and tell them how to handle these situations. We got to stand, even if it ain't popular. And you heard what Peter said, that sometimes what people will do will, they'll take the truth and, 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 and make it and look like it's evil. When Jesus was, was healing and, and opening up the, the eyes of the blind and, 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 and cause the, the, the dumb to talk and open up the ears of the deaf uh, ears. They said he had the spirit of the devil. They had the spirit of Beelzebub. This is what the religious leaders, the religious people that, that, that was not trying to understand him, combating him. Look what else he says. Going down to the sixth verse, God decreed destruction for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. A mound of ashes was all that was left. Grim warning to anyone bent on an ungodly life. Now, now we have to define ungodly life. What was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah? It was a whole lot of stuff. I know we, 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 we picked the part out about, um, um, you know, because people are quick to tell you that homosexuality is not in the Bible, but that's, that's not true. It, it's not called homosexuality, but it is called unnatural affection. That's the word, unnatural affection. 
uh, because God made male and female. He made male and female. And he told male and female to be fruitful and multiply. There is no multiplying without the male seed. All right. But there were other things that were going on in Sodom and Gomorrah that that was extremely uh, disgusting to God. See, it's ungodly behavior and it ain't just a uh, certain things it's ungodly behavior now the the part that that, that that goes to the act of desiring the the men of uh, the bible said number one there are no female angels all right they are male angels the Bible says that when those angels came into that place, the men, listen to me quick, good, good. It was the men that were going crazy about these angels. All right. It was the men. Those men was, were going so crazy about those angels until Lot offered those men his daughters they were they were trying desperate desperately to get to those men until the bible said that god had to smite them with blindness they were knocking the door down trying to get to them them them, them fellows you know to those angels so the bible does cover stuff if we choose to 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 look at it and study it, it covers stuff. Sometimes most of us want to be uh, argumentative. You know, we want to be debatable, or we 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 want we want to 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 try and and justify whatever it is that we're in. But the the reality of it is, nobody is here to attack anybody. But it is our job to make people aware of the truth and show you where the truth is. That this is not something that Billy makes up. It's not something that any other ministry makes up that is that is preaching or teaching the gospel. It is what God required. So now why did this judgment, this, this destruction come upon these places? It was because of the ungodliness. Remember, I'm going back to this. If Christ lives on the inside of me, then that means that fruit, if I'm known that the truth is known by the fruit that it bears, then that fruit ought to be bearing the characteristics of the one who lives on the inside of me. You see? You know, so when we start telling people that 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 ungodly behavior is acceptable. And we start trying to justify that and we're trying to teach that 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 ungodly behavior is acceptable, then we're going to fall in this category of false teachers. Because now what we're not doing is we're not teaching, we're not teaching according to the word of God. And, and I keep putting emphasis on this according to what God says versus what man is saying. Because now what we want to do is we want to explore theory. We want to preach and teach theory. We want to be politically correct. And we don't want to stand on the word of God. You see, and series like this is not popular because when somebody tunes in and we're in a, in a, in a season to where what people do, they they are able to edit and take pieces 
and and they take the pieces out and then they they exploit those pieces and then they blow that up and then, then you don't hear the whole thing you don't hear the whole message you just you just take excerpts of it and you put it out there this is how people begin to push their narrative remember what i said about jesus how did they push this narrative that somebody stole his body they paid them do not allow that word to get out that he had risen don't 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 we don't want we don't want them to hear about this supernatural move that is taking place that he's done what he said he's going to do so they they pay them now with all that being said as i sit here and i'm teaching out of love if you are participating in that ungodly behavior, not just homosexuality, but, but, but anything that the Bible declares ungodly, here's the thing. When you hear messages like this and God is giving you an opportunity or making you aware, it's not that God is trying to throw you away but God is trying to open your eyes. God is trying to make you aware. God is giving you an opportunity to come to yourself. Because it's not his will that any should perish. But you have choice. You don't have to participate in that. You can be delivered from that. Oh, yes. Yeah, you can be delivered from that. Do I think that that we have to be careful that we don't use words and terms that 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 is hurtful? Uh, that is calling people out of their name. Absolutely. We should not ever. Use terms and names to call people out of their name and then we think that we have achieved something because we got a few people that's applauding us calling out somebody out of their name and, and saying this and saying that when jesus operated in the new testament he operated with compassion he didn't compromise but he operated in compassion the only thing about jesus that is different from, from what I see today is when Jesus hung around those type of people, when Jesus hung around those uh, sinners, they were no longer sinners. There was a change. There was an impact. Go on and read it for yourself. Yes, the religious leaders came against him. What are you doing sitting with them? Do you know what kind of person that is washing your feet? What are you doing with, at, at Zacchaeus' house? Jesus said, I come for the lost. But whenever he went, there was change. There was impact. They, it, they, 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 they didn't leave the same way. You see? I don't have to insult you to present Christ. I don't have to call you out your name to present Christ. Because Jesus is love. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, we operate and we move in love, but we cannot condone what God does not condone. Let me say this again. We cannot condone, condone or endorse what God does not condone and what God does not endorse. What led to all of this in, in the Old Testament, 
And even now, it was the ungodliness. In the book of Exodus, when Moses was on the uh, mountain and he was receiving from God, and the Bible said Aaron was in, in command. Look at this. Aaron is in command. Aaron is put in charge. So uh, let's look at it like this. Moses is up there and he's receiving from God. He had to trust Aaron. Aaron is second in command, but Aaron is influenced by the people. He's so influenced by the people until he tells the people, bring it, give, give me your jewelry, give me all that. And he is the one who's carving. Carving this golden calf. But he's left second in command. Let me see this. Isn't that sad? My grandson was called stupid yesterday by one of his teachers at school. Oh, Lord. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah Miss Reed, Miss Marie, that's unfortunately that's why that's 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 the era we live in. People feel like they can do stuff and and no accountability. You see, so Aaron was left second in charge. Instead of Aaron standing up being the leader that Moses is, he is persuaded by the people to condone their desires. Let me say that again. He's persuaded by people to condone, and not only condone it, but he actually brings their desires to life. Red day. I don't know one. He, he brings their desires to life. He's instrumental. He's second in charge. So right now, while Moses is going and he's receiving from God, that means that Aaron is in leadership position. You see, Aaron is in leadership position. So what happens is he begins to the ungodly desires. Look at this, the ungodly desires, the desire that they have. He is instrumental in bringing that to life. I'm going to repeat it to you until you get it. He is instrumental because, and the reason I'm saying this is because a lot of this is going on. He's instrumental. Instead of standing up and opposing what they desire, he is instrumental in making or fulfilling their desires, their ungodly desires. He's instrumental in that. He's, he's instrumental. He's, he's carrying it out instead of opposing it. Oh, Lord, I hope y'all getting this. Instead of opposing it, instead of standing up and saying, no, no, we can't do this. He is instrumental in fulfilling their ungodly desires. I said this on yesterday. We are representatives of him, of God. And we got these narratives out. We got all of these things out that people are, are trying to, 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 to join pieces of scripture. 
join pieces of scripture to support the narrative and support this and support that. But that's why I encourage people to read the Bible for yourself. Study the Bible for yourself. Because we are indeed living in the last days. We're in the end time. People, the Bible said that people will become lovers of themselves. This is one of the characteristics that Peter says about a false teacher. They're in love with themselves. They're in love with their agenda. They're in love with their control. But they're going down a downward way of destruction and they're carrying people with them. I don't want blood on my hand. That's why I'm being obedient in teaching this series. I don't want blood on my hand. I don't want to be responsible for fulfilling something that was ungodly. Because I have to answer to God. I don't want to be misleading. You see, I don't want to be misleading. I don't, I don't want, I don't want to have that responsibility that I had that opportunity to stand and tell truth, but instead I participated in the fulfilling of somebody's ungodly desires because they're friends with me. They connected with me. So instead of me going and telling them the truth, I'm, I'm, I'm aiding and abiding. I'm participating in the fulfillment of their ungodly desires, of their ungodly conduct of their ungodly behavior. I'm, 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 I'm fulfilling this. You are fulfilling their desires when you are teaching opposite of what the word of God says. Which means that that means that I am responsible for putting people on a path of destruction instead of putting people on a path of life and life more abundantly all because I'm trying to appeal. That's what Aaron did. He tried to, he, he, he appealed to the people. He gave them what they wanted. He gave them what they desired. He helped erect what they wanted. In this day and time, my brothers and sisters, we cannot straddle the fence. We cannot, we got to be, because Simon Peter here in this epistle is coming from a pastoral position. He's concerned. You see? He's concerned. He's concerned about these false teachers and he's concerned about the influence. But he's also concerned about the spiritual growth of the people. He loves them enough to warn them. He loves them enough to be concerned about them, but he also loves them enough to see that they grow. You see, that they grow, that they are cultivated. He wants to be instrumental in seeing them go higher heights and deeper depths. 
but he does not want them to be influenced by the false teaching. So what he has to do, he has to begin to teach himself. In order to combat this false teaching, we have to, those of us that revelation has come to, that God has revealed his word through, that God has revealed truth through, we have to stand up and teach what has been revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. And don't worry about who's going to accept and who's going to receive and all of that stuff. Just be obedient because one thing that I do know that once you be obedient and you do what God tells you to do, there's going to be manifestation. God is going to confirm that I did authorize them to say this. I did authorize them to prophesy this. I did authorize them to lay hands on the sick. I did authorize them to speak that word. There's going to be manifestation. Sometimes we're worried about fanfare. We're worried about applause. We're worried about the adoration. We're worried about this and we're worried about that. And the thing of it is, the only thing that I'm concerned about is obeying him. Obeying him and 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 not only obeying him, but I love you enough to obey him and love you enough to make sure that what I'm saying is coming from him and not from Billy. Look at this. This is going to prove what I'm saying. Look at the seventh verse. And I'm reading for the Amplified Bible. Look at the seventh verse. But that good man Lot, driveling, driven nearly out of his mind by the sexual filth and perversity, was rescued. See, that's why I told you it wasn't just only just that it it was uh, it was perverts there. There were they were they were participating in ungodly behavior. You see. I could go deeper into that. I don't know how transparent some of y'all, but one of the things, one of the, one of the biggest weapons that the enemy uses in the body of Christ. You know, I'm going to see how many people are going to say, amen is sexual desire. I'm going to wait. Now, you ain't, you ain't got to believe it if you don't want to. But that's one of the strongest desires that the enemy tries to capitalize on is strong sexual desires. This stuff people don't want to talk about.
people. This is stuff folks don't want to talk about, but it's necessary. The enemy tries to capitalize on strong sexual desire, especially, now watch this, especially when you are anointed. You see? That's why Jezebel was so cunning is because she knew how to persuade, seduce. And everybody, and it ain't just only, see, because a lot of times we, 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 we do this one-sided. It ain't just the men that, that become victim of this. Women become victim of this too. You see, I don't know what it is about a preacher, a singer, a musician. Samson, as anointed as he was, his weakness was the women. And he ultimately succumbed to that by playing games. Lord, my time up. My time is up. But I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to discuss this on on tomorrow. These is this is one this is why it says here. Because what Peter is re, 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 referring to is back to the old testament what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah. He says that he was driven nearly out of his mind by the sexual filth and perversity and was rescued. Was rescued. I'm going to stop there and I'm going to continue on, on tomorrow. I saw uh, Bishop uh, Hooper's comment. B Bishop Hooper? Uh, but I think, yeah, you. but you know, you know. Um, the only sin that there will be no forgiveness of is blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. Now I don't know about that, so I'm gonna talk about that later on, also. But I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk about why the enemy uses the strong desires of men and women. And that sexual desire is the biggest that he uses. All right, y'all. I came on here late, so I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't stay on later. But uh, thank you so much for your encouragement. Thank you all for uh, reaching out to me. And if you're enjoying uh, the teaching or if there's something or there's a question that you have, feel free to inbox me. There's a, a thing on here called private chat. If you don't want uh, uh, people to uh, to see your uh, question, 
All you have to do is go into that private chat and and send it to me, and I can see it. I, I'll, I'll see the, the the red button when it lights up in order um, for that um, to be activated. So you do have access to that private chat. But uh, I pray that you are being blessed. Um, and I thank uh, Prophet Daniel for helping me when he puts those scriptures up there to clarify and justify what it is that we're saying on uh, morning worship and word. I love y'all to life. I see y'all back here tomorrow morning for morning worship and word on time. Yes, I will. <laughs>